So this is the Tronxy X5. So this printer was sent to me by uh, a company called Gearbest, and they sent it to me and asked me to do a review on it. So here I am. Uh, this printer has a 210 by 210 by 280 millimeter build area, with 280 being the vertical. And uh, I'm going to put it together. We're going to assemble it. Um, so these are uh, these, and then this are the only acrylic parts that I've seen in this kit so far, which is good. And this looks like it just holds the LCD, so not structural. Extruded aluminum. Dylan, I think we need to buy a bigger table. What? <laughs> That's not enough for you? Uh, not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do with this, but yeah. <laughs> Rods. Oh. Made that mistake before. So this is the controller. So. Here is all the extruded aluminum parts, um, along with these. Uh, one acrylic part supporting a motor, and then probably one of the worst 3D prints I've ever seen. Of course, this didn't come from this printer, couldn't have, you know, because it's not together yet. Yeah, this screw is just kind of hanging out in the box. Don't know what that's for. Look at these parts. Like, this couldn't have been cheap to manufacture all these different aluminum parts. Um, not really familiar with what kind of manufacturing process they would use here. Do you have any idea? Uh, it's probably machined. It doesn't look like it's got machined surfaces on it, unless they did a really good well, job, like, texturing or sandblasting it, maybe. That's yeah. anodized. Yeah, anodized, too. Cool. Anyways, they look expensive. Um, I wanted to talk about this, because look at how tiny that nozzle block is. Yeah, so this is a replacement nozzle for my existing 3D printer, and this is the one that came with this. Now, I'm, I don't know that that means anything, to be honest. I'm going to find out um, if this nozzle is actually the same wattage as this one, which is what I'm really curious about. So, uh, I've got... Uh, Volt meter here, and I'm a certified electrician, so I know what this is. Um, and this is a replacement nozzle for my existing printer, and this is 3.4 ohms, 3.5 ish. And then this one that they sent with this printer, which is the Tronxy X5, has a nozzle that is 4 ohms. So uh, ohms law on that: the lower the number is, the higher the wattage, um, and then the higher the resistance, the less the wattage. Um, because there's less resistance to current flow, means it's going to flow faster. The lower the number, the more the current flow. There we go. Ohm's law. V equals IR. I was wearing the shirt for the anvil video. Okay, so it says to take the power supply cord and strip the wires back. Oh, shit. Found a replacement. So I got this uh, American plug for America. Power supply is taking AC at... Uh, 120 volts or 220 volts or 110, 220, whatever you set the switch to. And it's going to be converting this into, I imagine, 12 volts DC. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to rectify the sine wave of AC current, turn it into 12 volts, blah, 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 put it through a bunch of capacitors, filters, and send it out to the 3D printer. So uh, 
I, I can't find the instructions, and I'm sorry if you guys have them somewhere, but I searched the internet, I searched uh, uh, the world, and I can't, I can't find them. So, um, unfortunately, I think that this printer doesn't have any instructions, any assembly videos, uh, even directions to assembly on the internet, or on the drive that came with it, this uh, micro USB with the USB adapter. I, I can't find it anywhere. But I feel pretty mechanically inclined, and I feel like I can put this thing together with that picture. So, um, if they do ever come out with an assembly video, an official one, I'll put it in the description. Um, otherwise, you guys can watch this video for assembly and I'll, I'll go through it and figure out where everything goes and try to find the best way to go about doing it and uh, help you guys get it together. So, these are the uprights and these rods go this way. Um, so, just to give you a look around the printer, uh, this printer has a build plate that that moves when it's printing. It actually moves down rather than the print head moving up. And then it's got this really big heavy carriage on the, uh, this would be the Y axis. And then another uh, machined aluminum carriage on the, on the X axis. Um, so there's a few added benefits of this printer. Um, it doesn't need a spool holder because you just put little chunks of filament in it and then uh, you could just hang them over the side like this and it does just fine it doesn't really hurt anything um, only downside being that you can't print things that are very big uh, unless you print yourself out a filament holder then you're good um, so I just plugged it in and this printer is pretty quiet it doesn't make much noise at all except for the power supply is really loud uh, it has a fan that runs full speed all the time uh, that's one thing I really don't like about it um, also um, I noticed I printed my first print on this and it's uh, stuck to the bill plate. I can't get it off. Uh, and it seems to, like I can get it off. The real problem is the fact that um, if I do get it off, this fancy blue stuff that they sent with it will come right with it. So I think I might just peel this stuff off because well, I can't get the print off of it. Of course the print comes off now. Oh well. Um, also another thing is, is that, oh, first off, nah, fuck it, <laughs> uh, they, they forgot to send me a part for this, this yellow part that you see here, I had to print on my Anet A8, so it's kind of like dead on arrival, that part didn't come with it, uh, and it also didn't come with instructions, uh, assembly took about 10 hours, uh, Really, it was a lot easier once I had instructions because I emailed them. If you just email them, you can get instructions. So that's not too bad at all. Um, really sturdy printer. This is the only printer that I have. Uh, and definitely my Anet A8 that I have inside this box here, you can't do this with. Um, you could literally pick this printer up and walk around with it while it's printing. And it wouldn't really matter except for this Z-axis build plate is pretty loose. Uh, and, and then that would wobble around but other than that this printer you don't have to worry about like moving it and having it go out of alignment 
because it's such a sturdy construction like that. So now I'd just like to go through all of the claims that the website makes um, and assure you that the printer uh, meets those claims. Um, so the first one, main features, extremely simple assembly, more stable performance, um, does have very stable performance, um, supports SD card offline function, yes it does, the SD card does work, um, stronger frame construction, aluminum profiles ensures stable prints, uh, yes this frame is very tough, the only thing I don't like there is that this is a little wobbly, uh, durable metal extruder, Upgraded to metal parts, equipped with high torque stepper motor, stable rotating speed and uniform extrusion force, feeding filament smoother. So, um, with the durable metal extruder, yes, if I, I assume they're referring to this uh, main block here, uh, that is metal. The brass is, the nozzle is brass, the brass is nozzle, and uh, I. I don't know they kind of exaggerated a high torque stepper motor because it's a 3d printer and you know you don't need high torque stepper motors anyways but you know whatever works um, LCD screen to show you printing information and easy for you to manipulate yep um, one thing about this LCD screen though is it's got a little problem so if I go this is Marlin software on here that it comes with so if I go to prepare and then try to adjust, well, hold on here, I have to print something first. So I'll just go print from SD, um, just pick that, and then go tune, and then go to bed, and it wants me to adjust the flow. And I can't get out of this menu. Nothing that it'll do there. It just goes from 0 to 99 and it won't let me do anything else. And then I wait for it to time out. Alright, there it timed out. Uh, so if I go to tune, uh, nozzle, yeah, it just wants me to adjust the flow again. Huh. Yeah, because on my. Uh let me show you my other printer here. This is a Anet A8 that I upgraded. Oh my god, I've done so much stuff to this printer. Uh, but like this one, here's what it's supposed to do. Okay, if I go to control, temperature, I go to like nozzle, then I can adjust the temperature of the nozzle. Or I could go resume print and it'll finish printing. And I could go pause print and it'll pause. So that's definitely a downside that you can't adjust anything when this printer is uh, printing. Another thing I noticed is that the build plate will not get up to 60 degrees. Uh, that's another thing I had a problem with. It'll get to like 52 or 56 and then it won't really get any higher even though it'll be on full time. Um, so that's kind of another thing that's a pain. Uh, probably not going to be able to do ABS on this unless you insulate the bottom of the build plate. And then, of course, if you do ABS, it really, would be a really wise idea to put an enclosure on this. Uh, left side, right side, front, back, top, which would be really easy with this printer. So here it's going for a print right on the aluminum. I should have some tape on there, but oh well. Um, another thing that happened is that this black wire pulled out of this stepper motor over here. And that was a bit of a pain. I had to like pull the connector out and recrimp it. Nice convenient little reset button on the Arduino board. Um, another thing, you can't really push the nozzle completely out of the way of the bed. I really wish you could. That would be nice. So I've never tried uh, glue on top of tape before uh, because I haven't used a tape bed in so long. Um, but this isn't exactly the right kind of tape to use. So I figured give it the best chance, glue it down, tape it down, whatever you got to do. Try to get something to stick to the bed. Um, and then of course I did align the, the, 
the bed and the nozzle before this video so I think that's pretty good so let's uh, give it another try Yeah, let's do a time lapse of printing. sharp anyways uh, that is uh, my thoughts on this Tronc CX-5 I hope you guys enjoyed this video I don't know if I'll be doing any more of these uh, yeah I was gonna do a video on the robot today and that was totally my plan um, but then you know the circuit board uh, yeah see one of these red wires like touched one of these things on here I think it blew up the stepper driver, but I think it also blew up my Arduino board, and it also shut down my computer. Uh, so it wasn't too good of a deal. Um, wasn't very happy about it, so I'm going to have to order a new Arduino do for that before I can be making any more robot videos or getting any more programming done. Uh, so that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, 12 volts right through the do board and uh, stepper driver and almost wrecking my laptop. Well, I still haven't checked to make sure the laptop's USB port works, so, you know, hopefully that hasn't gotten ruined. Um, so, yeah, there's that. I suppose you guys are curious about what this circuit board looks like. Um, very similar to the one for the ANET A8. Um, except it doesn't have two Z stepper motors. Um... Yeah, SD card, reset button, USB port thing, uh, wire connectors, they're nice. Hey, thanks for watching.